Hi everyone, here are some more chapter 2 problems, and here's number 6. A bowling ball is traveling with a constant speed, and it hits some pins at the end of a bowling alley that is 16.5 meters long. The bowler hears the sound of the ball hitting the pins 2.5 seconds after the ball is released from his hand. What is the speed of the ball if the speed of sound is 340 meters per second? Now this problem is all involving things that are traveling at a constant velocity, but it's complicated. So let's draw a little picture. Pictures can be really, really helpful, and if the situation is complex, it is really nice to have a picture. That's supposed to be a bowling pin. And uh, here's some ears on my bowler. So here's what's going on. The bowling lane is 16.5 meters long. And the bowler throws the ball down there. Um, so we've got two things that are in motion. We've got the ball, and we have the sound. If you have two moving objects, put a column of data down for each object that is in motion. Now, the ball is going to move a distance of 16.5 meters. So the bowler throws it down 16.5 meters. But the bowler hears the sound of the ball hitting the pins 2.5 seconds after the ball is released. So the ball is released and the sound waves come back and travel the distance of 16.5 meters. And the sound, sound is really very, very slow and it takes 2.5 seconds for the sound to travel that distance, and the speed of sound is 340, which is a very reasonable value for the speed of sound, and we want to know, um, oops, 2.5 for the after the ball is released. I put that in the wrong spot. So we want to know what is the velocity of the ball. Okay, we want to know what's the velocity of the ball. So let's take a look at what was that 2.5 seconds that I very cavalierly wrote down before. So it takes 2.5 seconds is my total time. Okay, my total time is going to be 2.5 seconds. And that is going to be the time for the ball to travel down the alley plus the time for the sound to travel back here. So I don't know what the either one of these is, but I can calculate the time for the sound. So if I can calculate the time for the sound, then I can use that to calculate the time for the ball. Once I know the time for the ball, I can find the velocity of the ball. So here's that's the path I'm going to take. So the first thing I'm going to do is I am going to find, my quest is I'm going to find the time for the sound. And how I'm am I going to do that? Well, I've got its distance, I've got its velocity, and I know velocity is displacement over time. I'm solving for time. So to solve for time, multiply both sides by t. t cancels. I end up with tv times x. I want to get time alone. I'll divide both sides by velocity. Pretty this up a little bit. Time is going to be displacement over velocity. Remember, if algebra is not your favorite thing, when we rearrange an equation, put that on your formula sheet. That's not cheating. It's just plain smart. So the time for the sound to travel is the distance the sound travels, which is 16.5 meters, and the velocity of the sound, 340 meters per second. Picking up my calculator, I've got 16.5 divided by 340 is going to be 0 0.04853. I've got three sig figs, so somewhere in there I should probably stop. What unit should it be? It should be sound. Let's take a look at, excuse me, it should be seconds. I said sound, didn't I? I'm getting silly. Where, where does that sound unit come from? Well, it comes from here. I've got meters divided by meters per second 
invert and multiply, seconds over meters, meters cancel, and I've got seconds. So this ends up being seconds. That's the time for the sound to travel. So if I want to know, do, 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 I want to know the time for the ball, it is going to be the total time minus the time for the sound is going to give me the time for the ball. So the time for the ball is going to be the total time, 2.5 seconds, minus the time for the ball, excuse me, time for the sound, 0 0.0485 seconds. So 2.5 minus 0 0.0485, and I end up with 2.45 I'm going to give it another decimal out there. Well, it's only three sig figs. That'll do seconds. That's going to be the time for the ball. Now I can plug that back up here. And if I know the time for the ball, I can now find the velocity of the ball. So velocity of the ball is going to be distance divided by time. And that is going to be 16.5 meters. The time for the ball is 2.4 five seconds and when I pick up my calculator 16.5 divided by 2.45 and I get 6.73 uh, meters over second is the velocity of that bowling ball. All right that was a tricky one and let's do one more in this video. So let's go down and let's do an acceleration problem number seven. Here goes. A sprinter accelerates from rest to 10 meters per second in 1.35 seconds. What is their average rate of acceleration? Start out, write down what we know. So time is 1.35 seconds. The from rest, that means original velocity is zero, to 10 meters per second, that's final velocity, is going to be 10 meters per second. And what is rate of acceleration? Acceleration is what we are looking for. Now, we are now in the constant acceleration problem. So you have four big constant acceleration equations. Look for one of those. And the one I would choose is VF equals VO plus AT. Original velocity is 0, so this is going to go to 0. Final velocity then is going to be acceleration times time. To solve for acceleration, I'm going to divide both sides by t. And my acceleration is going to be my final velocity, 10 meters per second, divided by 1.35 seconds. 10 meters per second divided by 1.35 seconds. And I get 7.41 meters per second squared. Now where do those crazy units come from? Meters per second divided by seconds is meters per second times 1 over seconds. Meters on the top, seconds times seconds is seconds squared on the bottom. Those are acceleration units. I probably did my algebra right. Yahoo! And that will finish this video. See you later.